Hello everyone, I'm Anton64. And I'm Mexican Bass Monkey. And welcome to the Hellfire Comms playthrough of Ocarina of Time 3D. This game was co-developed by Nintendo and a company called Grezzo, who I'm not entirely familiar with, per se. Uh, but besides Ocarina 3D, uh, they did their own game called Line Attack Heroes, uh, and they also handled the Four Swords Anniversary game. And uh, Ocarina 3D features, you know, obviously updated visuals, so there's nice particle effects everywhere, uh, updated character models... Uh, the inventory system has just been streamlined, so it's much easier to use. Very nice. And as you saw back there, you can play the Master Quest version of Ocarina of Time if you want. But instead of just being more challenging like the original version, this one also mirrors the entire game. Yeah, that's also why Link is right-handed in the Master Quest version of this game. That does not unlock until you've beaten the main quest, though. So uh, tell us a little bit about Ocarina of Time 3D, MBM. Well, cons hopefully you haven't been living under a rock for the last two decades, but Ocarina of Time is usually cited as one of the greatest benchmarks of video game entertainment. I mean, it became the gold standard for adventure games when it came out back in 1998. It's constantly being ranked high on most influential or greatest games list. It still holds one of the highest ratings on Game Rank and Metacritic. So, really, it's no surprise why they decided to port to the 3DS. I mean, when the system came out, there wasn't a lot to sell the system. I mean, they kept saying, hey, 3D, but what games were you going to play on it? So, Nintendo decided to go fishing through their history and find, hey, let's get our highest selling game and re-release it. Yeah, I was initially like, oh, this is, this is really cool, it's Ocarina with just updated visuals. Then I went through a phase of being really cynical and just didn't really care about the game at all. So it... When we were setting up the uh, zelda -phone, however, I uh, needed some games lent to me, and Ocarina 3D was one of them, and I just played it constantly. Granted, my internet was out at the time, so I didn't really have a choice, but I just got so attached to this game, it was so much fun. Yeah, there was a weird mixed reaction when this game first came out. Some people were like, oh man, they changed too much, which was weird, and then there were people that said they didn't change enough, like people were honestly expecting it to be a whole new game or something, it's just a graphical update, but people were like, where's the voice acting, where's the HD, it's like, are you serious? <laughs> I want to see every little fiber of that tree's mustache. I want to touch it in the 3D. Uh, you got any memories of Ocarina to regale us with, MBM, specifically from your childhood? Definitely. Um, when I first got my N64, Ocarina of Time was one of the games I got with it. And that was pretty much Christmas Day, was playing Ocarina of Time with my new N64. I got stuck in the first dungeon for a while, but I was a kid! You gotta cut me some slack. I have a similar story to yours, uh, but this was on the Master Quest version. I kind of got stuck in Dodongo's cavern, put the game down, and never played it again until I played the 3DS version of Master Quest. That's really not that big of a complaint. Master Quest has this weird idea with its design that a lot of the puzzles are solved by looking around the room. Like, when you play the original quests, switches are usually right in front of you in the center of the room, or they're in areas where they catch your attention. Master Quest decided to take that design aspect and throw it out the window. Instead, there's switches on the ceiling, like in a corner in dark tunnels it's like why did you put it there that doesn't make it harder that just makes it really inconvenient yeah, it's more confusing than anything oh there's a switch inside this trash can i never would have figured that out on my own not sure how to feel about child link's redesign it feels kind of uncanny at times it's probably the eyes that's usually the issue when a game character's model is uncanny as the eyes. I like his new design, and one of the things I actually like that I feel no one else kind of appreciated, I love his new walk animation. It just feels so much more fluid to me. Anything that, any character that shows hair is t ten times better. Yeah. Still got a problem with hands, though. Hands, eyes, mouth, it's never going to change. <laughs> so, even though we are playing through Ocarina of Time, you know, greatest game ever, greatest Zelda game ever, changed video games forever, I still don't think that gives it a pass in being critiqued and commentated over. 
Especially since this game has its issues. Even the original. Oh god, does the original have issues. I mean, while it may go down in history as the greatest game ever, I also believe it's going to go down in history as one of the glitchiest, buggiest, most exploitable games in the history of the media. Cosmo, for example, on Twitch.tv, uh, plays the shit out of Ocarina at time. Very entertaining to watch. Yeah, Ocarina of Time is up there with Super Mario 64 as one of the most popular games to speedrun, and part of it is nostalgia. I mean, it's always fun to speedrun a game from your childhood, but the biggest thing is that this game is very non-linear due to the insane amount of glitches. I understand that this was one of the first N64 games. They had to deal with memory constraints, and they took a lot of shortcuts that, when you play it casually, on a surface value, turned out pretty okay. But when you start to get into the nitty gritty, it's very, it looks like the game's being held together by gum and paper clips. <laughs> yeah, and now that we've got our first item, we may as well go over the inventory system. It's so convenient, it's just literally a tap of a button, you equip it, and like I said, with the iron booze, it takes away my main complaint of the water temple, in that you have to go back into the menu every single time. I mean, with this, it's just bloop, done. Yeah, they first did the Iron Boots switch with Wind Waker, but I'm glad they did it again with Ocarina of Time. They did, that was one of their main changes. Uh, dungeon design is exactly the same, except for one particular dungeon. You know the one. Don't pretend you don't. And all they changed was aesthetics. So, when you're in Kokiri Forest, your first goal is to go talk to the Deku Tree. But before you do that, you have to collect the Kokiri Sword, or as I like to call it, the Royal Butter Knife. Seriously, that thing is tiny. <laughs> and then you also need to collect 40 rupees in order to get a Deku Shield. And that's actually one of the first things that are optimized about Ocarina of Time is how to collect said 40 rupees. As you saw, when you get the Kokiri Sword, one of the greatest things to do is just chop down a bunch of signs. And Tom, the one sign you didn't cut down had 5 rupees in it. Oh my god. Well, that's why you're the speedrunner and I'm just the commentator. Yeah, there's also five behind there's five behind Mido's house. There's five on this bridge which you do get. And then there's five hidden in that hole when you climb out of to get the sword. When you do a backflip, it's like randomly in the air. Also, this girl, her name is Fado. Now, th within the context of the game, that means absolutely nothing, unless you remember that the Kokiri Sage in Wind Waker was also named Fado. Yes, yes, I remember that. And really, the only thing you need to know about her is that because you get certain dialogue when you put Max on, it's kind of assumed that she's uh, My Mido, the jerk leader, that they're siblings. Also in this house, this is pretty much to show you that you can kick open chests and get useless crap. <laughs> well, I don't think Mido needed this treasure anyway. He's well enough off as it is. Mido's a jerk face. Seriously, I don't get why they named a town after him in Zelda 2. He's a bit of a cockbug. He is. Even though you're supposed to get the sword and shield, you can actually say, forget you Deku Tree, forget you Kokiri Force, and you can just leave the forest without ever doing the first dungeon. <laughs> really? Yes, when they updated this game, they changed Link's sword slash animation to give him this triple slash. What they didn't know is that during the third slash, you can cancel that animation by pressing A mid slash. What happens is Link sheaths his sword and he clips back like a whole foot. Oh, so the Deku Tree is just waiting there going, Navi, where the fuck is this hero? Forget Deku Tree, I'm off to glitch the world. You use the clip pretty much by the guard who's guarding the hole. You turn your back to him, you do three slashes, cancel, and clip right behind him. And it's like, later, fella. <laughs> oh, that's so glorious. You can also use it to dive into the water. So there's a lot of ways to escape this forest and just leave the Deku Tree to rot. <laughs> this playthrough is just going to be you giving us the day great of Ocarina of Time, really. Pretty much. I mean, you went and got 40 rupees before you enter this shop when there's five behind the actual shop. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Stare at the shame. <laughs> 
fucking casual Zelda player. It's okay. Casual's the best. Everyone, because there's some people that honestly have ethical issues with glitching the game, which is like, why would you have a problem with that? The game lets you do it. It's not my fault the designers were noobs about it. Yeah, my feeling about that is if it's in the game, it's perfectly okay. And that's most of these glitches, especially when you watch a Zelda speedrun, they are in the game. I mean, cheating is definitely off the table. This playthrough is going to be a mix of, like, the usual upbeat commentary and speedrunning secrets, so uh, hopefully this first part has just given you a little bit of a preview to that. I mean, I don't actually run Ocarina of Time myself, but I've seen plenty, and there's websites just full of glossaries, uh, terms, techniques. I mean, there's a lot of resources if anyone is interested in running Zelda games or particularly Ocarina of Time. Oh, there you are, Link. I thought you would glitch through the exit to the forest. No, we're actually going to maybe deal with the Deku Tree's problem, plus that mustache. I like the updated model they gave for the all the updated models in this game. It's just the neat little touches that Grezzo put in. There are a lot of stuff. I mean, the little particles floating around. I don't know. That seems to be my favorite part of Kokiri Forest, and they definitely... Those pop out a lot with the 3D. Mm. And uh, th I think they made the game a bit darker overall than, you know, like you would see on the 3DS screen itself, just so the 3D would pop more. So I apologize if that shows through here. And, well, we're out of time for the first part, so we'll see you all next time when we go inside the Deku Tree. See you then.